<laughs> I just pressed the go live button and I heard a little voice in my ear said, have you checked your cameras yet? <laughs> yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Heartwood Turning. <laughs> you can hear them laughing in the background. Oh, God, this is going to be a fun day. So oh, let's see who we've got. Uh, let's see who the supporting cast are today. <laughs> oh, God, this is going to go well. So we have Terry from TJ Turning. We have Joe. Hello, everybody. The, the voice of an angel. Good afternoon. <laughs> we, we have we have Mike. Um, uh, what's his second name? Oh, I won't. That's him. Well, good afternoon, <laughs> we have, everybody. We have, we have Mark, the gentleman wood turner. And we have a good friend, Pete from Twisted Trees. I'm back. Good afternoon, everyone. Every, everybody's here. So Say hello, Mark. This... Hi, everyone. Hello, Mark. Sorry, my internet froze just as he was about to say my name. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> right, oh, my right, get, Shut his right, get back in the background. Go on, get lost. Go on. Right, okay. So today we're going to turn a fuzz. Fed up doing bowls. Bo bowls. So I'm going to do bowls. a fuzz. <laughs> a bowl. Not on the bowl. <laughs> a cross between a fuzz and a bowl. Yeah, a bowl. Right, let's have a look at the piece of wood we're going to use. That's this a is lovely it. bit of ebony, that is. Cool. So, cool. Mike's had his eyes fixed and he thinks this is ebony, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he needs a refund. That's yeah. all I can say. <laughs> yeah, we all know it's Coca Bola. <laughs> Sorry. This, this, this is a large piece of Coca Bola. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Cherry. <laughs> it's a fairly substantial piece. It's about 10 inches across or 10 inches long. Uh, roughly about uh, five to six inches, depending on where you look at it. The first job is to round it, but because this um, piece has got a branch inclusion there, another largest branch inclusion here, another one here, another one here, um, it would be unadvisable to use a spindle roughing gauge, particularly the one I've got, which is quite small. So I'm going to bring this to round using a half inch bowl gauge. So whilst I do that, you guys can chat amongst yourselves and see how much mischief you can cause. I won't be there to go. Somebody got to do the introductions. Who's here? I'll do it if you like. So I just What's turn that? on the speed down a bit because it's. I've, I've, about, never, yeah. I've never done it. Never done it. Oh, come oh, on, you I go ahead then, mate. Oh, yeah, you, you do it. Do it. Right. So I, okay, I can only do it off the the chat on um, stream out though. So if I miss anybody out, I'm sure oh, somebody else. Okay, so we have Mark the Gentleman Woodturner, Chris Dodds, Pete Twisted Trees, TJ Turning, and Joe Senior. And we have Norman Greenwell, Paul Hoyton, uh, the Greasby Turner, uh, Paul Hoyton, the Greasby Turner twice, so it must be his brother, uh, Brian Watkins, um, who else have we got? Clint at Wood Dancers, the Klondike Craftsman, um, Woodworm Paul. And we have Trevor P. Hobby Turner, Doug Miller at Woodspun Round, Robert Dolman, Steve Hale, and Wyvee Woodshed, and I think Copper Owl would turn in. Did you say Mike Doyle? I've, no, I haven't got the Mike Doyle yet. Forking Owls we have, but Mike Doyle as well. Roger Mills, and have I missed anybody out now? Coming down to the end, Terry Bartlett. Hello, Terry. Hodgepodge Woodworks, Tommy's Workshop, and I think Michael Buckingham. It's not the best way to do it, is it? But never mind. Mass Jabrick, DIY. Oh, there's Mike. Oh, hi, Mike, for the second time. Bailey Woodworks and bearing in mind I'm doing this off the chat within streaming out and I think I've covered everybody I'm Todd of Glen Cove Woodworks good afternoon we and have... welcome to everybody we also have wood turnings by Barry as well oh wood turnings by Barry I saw him there but I just thought I'd ignore him to give Joe something to do <laughs> we've got Chris from Bailey Woodworks in as well said that said that, said that. Nah. did you yeah, yep. did. All right. did you Yep. yep. <laughs> you sure? Mm -hmm. All right. 
Well, that didn't bad, Mike, for old oh, man with just. Yeah, that's you know, not bad good as job well. You yeah. Put the Braille version up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, welcome There's everybody. There's a big knot in the middle there. Just kind of try and slow my lay down a bit. <gasps> A question from Forking Owls. <laughs> Is Brian finally popping his cherry? Yeah, possibly. Try to turn the speed up a little bit. Jury's out on that one, I think. Is that wood wet, Brian, or dry? Or... Um, I think it was cut about uh, two years ago, and I've had it Hang for on. about uh, sealed up in my shed for about a, uh, just over a year. Maybe two years nearly now. Pretty dry then, I should imagine. So there. it's fairly well dryish. But I don't know. We'll find out when I'm trying to hollow the inside. Hopefully. Well, the good thing if you're hollowing it, we... you hollowing it. Yeah, I was going to say, but the, the middle is going to be the wettest part and you're going to be taking yep. that away. So should really crack nicely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's <just> cherry. <laughs> yeah. Being as it's cherry, yeah. It's just liable to pop. Boom. You only get it resin. That's why I'm. <laughs> That's why I'm. I got some. Popping. I got some spare resin if you want some, Brian. You can keep your resin. Yeah. Can I just yeah. ask a question? That's only about no, I might have asked on. it before, but I can't remember what the answer is now. My memory's go not on. like it today. Yeah, well, the thing is, a lot of people get the burl blanks and the waxed up. Is it like just ordinary candle wax that you can use to wax up? Paraffin wax, yeah. Still paraffin, yeah, paraffin yeah. wax. Paraffin wax um, or candle wax. Yeah, you can use any candle wax. Yeah, yeah. Paraffin wax. Yeah, paraffin wax. Yeah, you can use anything pretty much. Anything to seal it. I tend to, yeah, I was going to um, say, I tend to use um, PVA glue. You get that. Yeah. You get a five yeah, liter. Water, water down PVA. Yeah, you would use water, you tie your bugger you. No, yeah. but if you do water it down, it gets into the pores a bit better as well, I quite agree. But, so um, what's the reason for waxing? Well, what happens is, when you've got a log it and you can say... It what? It takes it takes a a <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. The idea, it, Joe, is well. if, if you imagine when you cut a log, you've got two open ends, two two new ends, if you like. And the moisture wants to escape, so it'll escape. It'll take the easiest route, and the easiest route to the open ends. Yeah. So if you seal those ends, it slows down the moisture, uh, the uh, the drying process, and it reduces. It doesn't eliminate, but it reduces significantly the the chance of cracking, major cracking. So oh, instead yeah. of the two ends drying fast and the middle, uh, exactly, sort of the sides drying slowly. The whole thing should then dry at the same speed. Like I'll Mike tell you says, what. It doesn't stop it, just reduces it. You know, sometimes, Joe, when you see people saying, cut, you know, cutting up a downhill and so on, it basically wood is like straw, a bunch of straws. Yeah. Well, if you imagine a bunch of straws and you cut the ends and it's wet in the middle, the moisture is going to take the easiest route, which is to the ends of the straws. Fair enough. Not through the walls. <laughs> Okay. Let's try and screw this end up a little bit. Now, Lewis is just men mentioning the uh, temperature of minus 21 right now. 21C. Good grief. Mm. You can keep that. Yeah. 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 I don't, think we've, we, yeah. I don't think we've ever had that in the UK, have we? I've, uh, I had a, a, when I lived in Scotland, we had a, a one night. Um, it was minus 22 in Scotland. Really? Good grief. Yeah. Was that the Highlands? And, and it, yeah, well, up towards the the foothills of the Grampian Mountains. Mm -hmm. And they actually killed the, the my next door neighbour had a huge eucalyptus tree. And it killed it stone dead. Yeah, but it I, did. Yeah. Through the roots. When I moved in with Glyn in 2009. Hell froze um, over. Yeah, it was <laughs> what did for Glenn anyway. Ended yeah. up getting a week off work at college, and that was minus fifteen, and that's when we lived near Selby, and that was a really cold winter. Yeah, I'm pretty well, sure see, where I... I live, it's been down to about three degrees. At some point. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah, on the coast. Yeah, but you yeah, might as yeah. well live in France, you. <laughs> it's Portsmouth you live, isn't it? Oh, Plymouth. 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 Yeah. 
Because I remember oh. when I used to live in uh, West Wales, uh, not West Wales, sorry, in South Glamorgan. We used to live on the sort of southwest coast, if you like, down by Puthcall. And I do remember one year, I think it was 60, the big freeze of 61, where we went to the, because we live not far from the sea, obviously, literally hundreds of yards rather than miles. And um, there were lumps of ice floating about in the sea. Oh, that was so cool. Right. And we've got well, Lewis, uh, Lewis has just confirmed that he was actually incorrect. It wasn't minus 21. It was minus 29. Oh, jeez. Good grief. Do you, do you live at the North Pole? or well, Where do you actually really live? just put his, put his gin and tonic out the window for about five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good grief. I'll just put a can on, on, on the sand now. You've got to round it off first, Pete. Brian. No, oh, Brian. Brian. Well, right. like, what? Well, it's round. It's round. Oh, is, is it? Oh, well. it's funny how people's perception of round differ. Isn't it? Is, is this volume yeah. going to have a fit? I was going to ask that. I, <laughs> just I hope not. Well, I think that's open for debate. I think we'll, we'll let the chat decide. There really it shouldn't be a debate that. about it. Michael Buckingham's in. Hello, Michael. Yeah. I said hello to Michael when he arrived. Did you yeah, he said I did. He used to. He used to work in a freezer that was minus 26. Yep. Uh, but at least he could walk out again. <laughs> yeah. Warm. That's yeah. right. Yeah. The Cornish Maid 1982 is in. Good afternoon, Katie. Hi, Katie. Hi, Katie. How are you? Yeah, my first time I worked in Norway, I started in December. And they said to me, don't buy any clothes in England. They're no good. Wait till you get there. Mm. So I arrived in Norway. In Na naked, UK clothes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, naked. Well, that was cold. Stepped out of the plane, and I tried yeah. to get back on the plane and go home again. That cold. <laughs> that was a wise that decision. Cold. That was a wise decision. But, uh, it's not too bad once we once we got sorted, got a taxi to the clothes shop, bought some warm clothes. Um, most of it was indoors anyway, so it was fine. Clothes expensive over there. Yeah. Mm. Rex Everything's easy. expensive in Norway. Hey, Rex. Hey, Rex. Good Hi, afternoon, Rex. Rex. Good afternoon and welcome. He says he, uh, he's, <clears throat> he said once in in Indiana he had a wind chill of sixty below. So that's minus sixty. Was that minus sixty Fahrenheit or centigrade? I don't know what the conversion is. You use Fahrenheit a little bit, which would probably be like uh, minus 20. Much good at that conversion. He is. Top it at that 30. Minus 30. Ooh. Not too good. Thermal underwear needed. I suppose you got that anyway, Joe. Yeah, minus 60 Fahrenheit. Which end are we working on, Mount Brian? Oh, this is the base. Cool. No foot then. No foot. No foot. That's cool. Excellent. Oh, I'm gutted. <laughs> it be. End, end of debate. <laughs> here end of here end of the argument. Yeah. <laughs> I like feet. He's making yeah, a vase. I like mine too, and the end of my legs, but not the end of my vase. Yeah. Katie's making a vase out of cherry or ebony, whichever we decided. I think, uh, I think Mike has decided it was Coca Bola the one time. Yeah. He, has his eye, he has had his eyes operated on Mike. <laughs> so, <laughs> where, where's the tenant going then, uh, Pete? The tenant's right here. Right. So, Brian, where's the tenant going? So, you're going you're gonna to hollow that big lump of wood out off a little tenant like that? I am indeed. My God, you're a brave man. Yep. Rex, the wood is, the wood is cherry, Rex. No matter what anybody else says. He's I making a vase. Yeah. A vase. A vase. A vase or a vase. We're just getting, we're just roughing some wood out, just getting rid of some. I'm not into it, Brian. There's something wrong there. I'm not sure what. what? Yeah, I think the base is a bit, the, the thickness at the bottom is a bit. It's a bit thin at the bottom. 
Yeah, yeah. I don't mean oh, I don't mean the final will, stage. Will be. <laughs> will will be. He's still hogging it out, isn't he? Movie yeah, camera. Out, yeah. Each to his own. Don't be afraid, guys. The other thing, Brian, now you've got it down to that stage, you could actually switch to spin a roughing gouge now. Yeah. I could. Or, a or, or you could put a tether on that end and use that as the, have the other as a top and have a nice small opening to hollow from. There's so many possibilities. Kite, his shed has just joined. Yeah, I'm not saying that. Yeah. You, you can't feel down into it, see how good it was cut. No, that's true. Yeah. Well, that's the idea, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a question why. there from Rex. Uh, Rex is saying, what is the wood type and special project? Cherry. Cherry. Is, uh, cherry. Cherry. I believe that's English cherry, not American cherry, which is yeah, quite different. Mean, that's a bit more. American yeah. cherry is a lot darker. Oh, look at that split there again. Mm, that's interesting. Do we that's get great. American cherry over here? Uh, if we import it, we do. Three rather large corrects the here. Rex has just asked another question. He says, um, you see the end at the tailstock end. How uneven is it? It looks uneven. Um, what is the easiest way to smooth That's, that out? Just bit here. Tailstock end. Tailstock. Like this? Yeah. Oh, how's it un it's uneven here because it's because it happens to the end of Yeah, but you probably use a parting tool to get Well, if I, was, if I was going to do that, if I was going to square that, I'll just use this beating parting tool. Beating, yeah. squares it up a bit like that, and then when he puts it in the chuck, he can take the rest of it off. Just like that. You could use a, a gouge as well, I suppose. You could easily cut that with a gouge too. Yeah, there especially when it's, once it's in the chuck, it's um, throwing a spindle gauge across it. Nice job. It would be if it had a, a bigger tenon. What's wrong Mike, do you think the tenon's too small? I do, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm no, not sure just, of the size of it. Was too big. I mean, give it me a looks chance. a bit small. But then we don't know the size of it until he measures it. Greg Alexander has joined us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Greg. And welcome. Could be an interesting hole. Certainly could. Well, for us. You're going to use your Sorby hollowing jig. I uh, am indeed. What's the name? Tool holder jig. Hollow Pro, it's called. It looked good the last time you used it. Yeah, I rate uh, them very highly. I might have to get one of those actually. I have to just angle that a little bit to take that from where I want the the waist, if you like, or the yeah, the gentleman's waist, because it could be sticking out a bit. Nice shape, Brian. That's me you being serious. I said it's a nice shape. Me being serious. That's, that's not that's not like you, Mike. No, I know. No. <laughs> credit where credit's due. <laughs> well, just coming round to the right shape now, I think. Yeah. Similar to the one you put up on Facebook the other day, with it, which you had coloured, yeah? That was the one yesterday. I did that yeah. one yesterday, so it's the same sort of idea. But it is the other day yesterday, isn't it? Not today. Yeah. Just to miss that. Yeah. Oh, it's lovely. It's really it's nice. Did you use embellishing wax in the grain? Yes, well? I did, mate. Yes, yeah. I used gold yeah. embellishing wax. Yeah, came out very nicely. Shame about the tool marks, but, you know, it looked really good. Oh. <laughs> tool marks on it. You... <laughs> <laughs> Todd has asked a question. What, what colour is Mike picked out for the box? <laughs> well, an international colorist. my color spectrum now, Todd, has completely changed because I think that's what what. Um, what I need to do is turn that speed Brian, up a whole lot. Brian's turning coca bola as far as I'm concerned, or African blackwood. So I can't do any coloring at the moment because I can't perceive what colors what. 
purple, you never whatever could it is. Could you? No, no. But I've got well, a good make excuse it, we, to we, we could make it purple. Yeah. No, not purple. Purple. That's what I said. Ryan, purple. Ryan, Martin's yes, asking, do you, what's the link to your website, please? Uh, <coughs> link to my website is uh, Hartwood Turning. Hartwood Turning. Dot Wood Turners UK. No, oh, sorry. Dot Wood Turners Dot UK. Artbird turning dot wood turners dot UK. That's a okay, beautiful Martin, show. Did you get that? Beautiful. Lawrence Bagage is in just the chat. She's got on here just to try to make Lauren. that a lot tidier. And may I say that that tenon is more than adequate for the size of the blank now? It is, Mr. You were just playing with me, weren't you? Yeah, I was just toying with your with your emotions there, Mike. Just to see what you felt about it. Well, I am very emotional. The next question unstable. is: what, you, the question I'm going to ask you guys is: I'm going to take my I can take my face shield off now. I just use my goggles now. I'm not afraid of that hitting me, so take that off. Should I round this uh, end over a little bit more? No. Or just in my opinion, though, no. I think that's a nice shape, personally. Personally, I like that shape. Yeah. Oh, it must be it must be wrong then, Brian. If Pete and I, yeah, I see a few cracks there. Yeah, I like that. There's crack, crack, crack. Big crack. crack. Another one. Thing with it there, Brian. Glue those push. now so that you can cut the glue? surface of the glue off. Yeah. Mm. If you glue them now, then when you when you finish, it'll take the uh, top of the glue off. And it'll just be down in the crack where you want it. Malcolm, Malcolm Douglas. Douglas is in. <laughs> Hi, Malcolm. Just run, Hi, Malcolom. Run some CA down in there, then. I it's didn't worry about. Why would it be cracked like that? Because it's cherry. Cherry likes to crack. Basically, it just it just cracks well, the, the end fun. grain of the log, wasn't it? That was the end of the log, wasn't it? Yeah, this is the end. Yeah. yeah. You know, if if you if the log had been like three or four inches longer, you could have chopped that off. Yeah. I'll, rem I'll remember that the next time I process cherry to make it longer than it needs to be. Yeah. I do that with well, all wood these days. Smaller. Yeah, well, make, make when, when I first smaller. started, remember, <laughs> guys, I didn't, I didn't know anything. So, two years ago, when I got this piece of cherry, I didn't know anything. So, um, Brian, can I just say something a sec? Yes, ma'am. Firstly, sorry, I disappeared for a bit. Secondly, Are you back? if anybody, yeah, if anybody gets any messages for me or has got a message for me in the last few seconds, don't open it. I've been hacked. Mark, no. So I've just... got a message from you, Mark. Yeah, just don't open it. Just delete it. I've changed my password, and I'm just going through all the security stuff. Uh, that one. <sighs> Sorry. Oh, man. Hi, Rory. We'll let you off. Not your fault. That's them random hackers. David J. Oh, Heath. They're, they're yeah. everywhere these days. David, Rob CP as well. Hello, Rob. Hi, David and Rob. How are you doing, buddy? Hi, guys. Oh, hi, Rob. Right, now that I've got that to the shape that I want, I'll need to let that super glue dry just for if I could have hit it with a bit of... No, I don't up. activate it. Just uh, no, talk for a bit. Because it goes off. It's soaking a bit. Yeah, okay. That is soaking. So, just talk for a bit, he says. I just felt a little ridge there. I don't like that. Is that so thin just, CA you're using, Brian? That, that was thin CA, yeah. 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 Uh, from from Starbond. I know somebody was. Really? There. Yeah, Starbond. Mm. Cost me a cost me a fortune. It's expensive stuff. Arch Podge Woodworks is saying that the link does work. It takes them to someone in a tutu, but more attractive than Mark. <laughs> no, don't say that. I'll, I'll, don't even joke with that. I don't want people to open the link. Don't even joke about it, because. That's how these things spread. Yeah. Just delete it. It doesn't open, open anything. It, it, it will instantly it infects your, phone. your, uh, your phone. And then it'll send the same message to everybody in your contacts. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've now got 3,000 messages just come through, and I've got to now delete every single one of them. Right. Let's have a look. You think, well, that'll be dry enough now to turn that. Last time I did that, I got a super glue mark all the way up my... Yeah, that television. Television. Well, you, you can activate it now. He's had a bit of time to soak in. Just seal the top layer. Just seal the top layer, just. 
Yeah, I find when you hit it with activator too quick, it doesn't get down into the crack. Yeah. Very true. I often wonder what's in this activator. I'm getting a bit worried about this. Well, I'm not agreeing with you so often. Yes, yeah, worrying. Really, yeah, it's, it's a worrying. bit worrying right enough. It's, it's it like, certainly is. Right, there's a little bit of a lump there, but that'll sand off. So we're just going to sand this a little bit now. Hey, Mark, you might have been mistaken just now when it's about hodgepodge link. It was Brian's link to Brian. Oh, it was link. All right. M Mike Doyle has just said, when he preps cherry wood, I have a tree huh? in the back. I cut the blanks and then boil them. And they rarely crack after that. Boil them? Boil them? Yeah. Mm. That's a different thing. Never I've heard, heard that of, before. I've heard, I have heard of it. I've never actually attempted it. But... I've never done it because I've never done anything big enough to boil them in. Mm. No. An eight foot length of cherry. Yeah. I was sitting there to rub CP. We did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, you were asleep too. Hi, Rob. I must have been. Again. <laughs> Michael McGowan. Hello. I didn't. Uh, didn't so, again, when it, when it, I'm using this Robert, Robert Sorby. Oh, no, it's not Robert Sorby. Simon Hope. Simon, Simon Sorby Simon or Hope. Rob, Robert Hope. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> uh, and I've got the lace running at 700 revs. Too slow. Not too slow. It is too slow. And I'm not using any pressure on the tool at all. Just let the sandpaper do its own thing. Now, Mike, Mike, Mike Doll has just added what it does, it stabilizes the cells for the drawing process. Good to okay. know that. Good to know that. <coughs> and Lewis has wisely Best. pointed out you have two choices, Mike. You either agree with Pete or be mostly wrong. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> is it that, Lewis? Uh, yeah. Lewis, Lewis, wrong. Lewis. He's not wrong, though. I must be honest. Pete is a bit of a sage, an onion. I have to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Paul Finley. Just Hello, Paul. Paul. Welcome along, Paul's buddy. Woodworking. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Join Paul us. and Paul. Oh, Paul, Paul, Paul did an time. interesting project last night. He had a little premiere last night. He did a real interesting project. Uh, it had four pieces of wood mounted between two discs. It's a uh, square turning, it's called, or something you'd call it. I can't remember what you call it. Yeah. But it's, it, it turned four vases at once. Oh, yeah, I, yeah brilliant. Yeah, I, I've seen that. Have to be very accurate on your setup, though, I would think. Yeah, that's the, that would be the, the issue there, I would think. That doesn't look all that nice a piece of wood, to be honest. The shape's lovely. Really impressed with that. Yeah, I know. No, I'm serious. Go I'm worried safe. about the... Uh, no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, mate. Okay. I'm just worried about the, the super glue now because it seems to have spread everywhere. Can I drop that uh, link to Paul's... Of course you can, mate. Yep. Yes, of course you can. It was it's, it's, uh, it was an interesting little premier he had. Tim from TF Turnings in. Hello, Tim. Hi, Tim. Good afternoon, Tim. Uh, well, that was. Uh, let me just go up another couple of grits. So you can get rid of this. There's the link, people. That Pete's just put in for Paul's project. That's like Paul Finley's multi-axis um, square vase thing. Yeah, that's it. Let's switch that. A multi-axis square bars. I'm guessing that boiling uh, a piece of wet wood is a similar internal chemical change as steaming wood to bend it. But, be, yeah. well, I suppose, I. Which I have to stabilise it. And it'll break down the cellulose in the, in the cell so that it becomes more pliable. I'm guessing it's the same thing. As I said, that's a good. That's a good thought, Pete. I would, have, yeah. Probably all right. I, don't, I don't have a big uh, big container to boil it in, so I haven't done it. Don't agree with you, Pete. <laughs> I suppose you could steam it, couldn't you? If you've got a you know steaming system. I mean, I assume we're talking logs of a manageable size, obviously. Yeah, because, obviously. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, we're not talking about half trees, obviously. No, no, no. I think we're talking of pre-cut logs and and I would maybe, think, yeah. If you had, maybe, if you could do logs that put, size, I suppose you'd put it in a kiln, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. Oh well, I know what's going to happen tonight. You could get a bigger saucepan on the 
on the cooker Thank and you. see, Sorry, see what the news is. I'm going to show what, what have we got for tea. Yeah. What have we got for tea, dear? We've got six, six, I think three, you might be eight, sleeping eight, in the workshop tonight, Mike. Two, ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the idea, Pete. Hopefully I'll get banished to the workshop. TBC bushing. Yeah, you could be a lucky. I yeah. uh, quickly jump up to 240. Ah, Dan has just joined us. Hello, I'm new to the channel. You could add two wheels and call it a cannon, ready to fire a cherry bomb. Uh, yeah, ah. could I? Yeah. Certainly could, yeah. Yeah, how's, how's that getting a shape of it right now? And welcome to the channel, Dan. Yeah, Indeed. welcome, Dan. Welcome along, buddy. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and uh, you'll get to see what, what else Brian gets up to. Uh, Rob, Rob CP's got a question. Um, how much is an extractor hood like Brian has there? I think it's about £100 for yes, Maxminster. Is there any cheaper for the type newer turner? Uh, you're not called newer turners anymore, Rob. Did you, it, did you just say newer turner, Mike? Did you? Yeah, I, 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 no, I thought I you did. Exactly, yeah. yeah, I said it, but it wasn't actually my interpretation. Oh, you sorry. Have, so you, oh, you just read it yeah. out then. I oh, yeah, see you. The okay. New, the new terminology, Rob, CP, <laughs> is, are you ready for <laughs> it, turners? <laughs> Turners with less experience. <laughs> Turners with less experience. Unfortunately, Rob, you don't you don't fit into that category because you can turn quite well. Exactly. Yeah. And actually, Rob's been turning as long as I've known him. So. Yes, exactly. Um. Everybody say hello to Richard. Hello, Richard. Hello, Richard. Oh, yeah. Rob, with a bit of ingenuity in a Tupperware pot, you can make your own. Yep. Yeah. You can make a wooden fitting to join it here. I've got turned wooden fittings to join the hoses up everywhere. Yep, exactly. Yeah. One of them plastic containers you can buy dirt cheap in um, yeah. pound shop or a range or whatever. Yeah. And uh, I can't remember how much I paid for that. I don't think it was all that expensive. So. I've got no. one, but I, I got it when I was being generous to myself, having sold my old lathes and Calling to Axminster on the way back from delivering it, so yeah, uh, see, yeah, lots of money. With, with spare money Sneak in your pocket, yeah, that's, that's a go. huge mistake. <coughs> JP we, nobody ever hello, just Jamie. pops into Axminster. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Jamie. Hi, yeah. Hi, JP. How are you doing, buddy? Strawberry, as I tend to call JP. Strawberry. Yeah. Lots <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> of strawberry. I tell oh, you what, I've met, I've, I've met Jamie on mark. two occasions, and he he's the he doesn't he's the least looking strawberry I've ever seen. There's a story behind that, and then Brian. I'm sure there must be. There must be. There, is. there must be. There's a strawberry hanging on my wall here. Ah, right. That Jamie sent me for someone. I don't know why he sent me. I mean, it's just the kindness himself. So. Tim from TF Turning has said his his four year anniversary is tomorrow. So I take it you're going to. Uh, Yandos or wherever you live, uh, maybe if it's in England, I don't know where you live. Actually, uh, one of the which anniversary is this? Four years, shop. four years, four years of being at Wood Tunnel, or four yeah, years yeah, being married? Four years or... turning. Well, yeah. either one calls for a visit to a tool shop, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Ah, oh, I knew there was a reason Joe was here. Just is she gone again? So, no, I'm here. No, oh, she's still here. Sing. here. Hang on. Reaches for so that was Sandy Sheila. So we're just going to give us a little blast <laughs> of uh, our favourite abrasive paste. Yorkshire grit. Uh, applied when the lace is stationary. So I'll just point out that uh, Richard Raffin's version can blow apart if hit by flying wood. Um, the idea is not to have any fine wood in the workshop. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's usually avoidable if you can manage it. And and just it. and just as a um, well, a, an aside, Axminster's big hood, like the one I got, is twenty quid. This one, yeah. Right. Yeah. You must, you uh, must no, be talking. no, you've got the thin one. The big one. The narrow one, the the big wide mouth hood. Oh, is there a bigger one than that? All oh, right. Yeah, it's it's just it's wider. Okay. It's about the same um, 
dimension across, but it's about, I don't know, four times, five times wider. Oh, yeah. Jamie's that, missed that's... your voice, Joe. He's saying, that's... sing, Joe. I missed it. So uh, I don't know where you get your hundred quid from, Rob. <laughs> there you go, Joe. Thank you. Go, Joe. Hands that feel pity can be soft as your face. Look <sighs> like brown, not too gritty. There we go. Wonderful, Joe. Yeah. Wonderful. Voice of an angel. Wonderful. Voice. No. Voice of an angle grinder. <laughs> Voice of an angle grinder. <laughs> uh, <laughs> What's of an angle? I mean, going I mean, Lawrence would like to know: Is the extraction hood sixty-three millers by one hundred, or is it bigger than that? Well, this one. Hmm. It's Looks attached like, to a hundred. Think it's one of the goes on the back. In which case, by that one's hundred. That one's uh, twenty-five centimeters across, and it is one hundred and ten mil in depth. So five inches by thirty. Ooh. Jeez, you want that in inches now as well? No, it's five. Ten inches by. Ten. Five. Four and a half inch, four and a half inches. Yeah, but I think he means the, the hose on the back of it, which is under. Oh, it's four inch, yeah, right. four yeah. inch. And the one I got is twelve by fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Cool. You would have to have a bigger one, of course. Well, it it just made more sense actually, because I, I did uh, play with a little one, but I got rid of it because it actually wasn't that brilliant unless it was really on where you were sanding. This one yeah, takes everything gotta, in. It's got to be quite close, right? Now. That, that depends on your extractor as well. Yeah, it's And that Colwyn, Colwyn Way uses a flexible aluminium tubing, which looks like it goes to a outlet of a clothes dryer. I use the same flexible stay yeah. fast hose, which is, and I don't bother to put a hood on That's it. That's expensive. It to where you want it. It's expensive. Stay fast hose is quite it, expensive. It's, it's great. But it is good for, well, as Lord, you say, yeah, it's yeah. very flexible, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, the connection is four inch, Lawrence. It does what it says on the tin. And mm. it stays mm. fast. This is a this is a TV bracket the mine hinges on. What's the picture like? <laughs> Square, eight inches Square, long. Yeah. <laughs> Two hundred by. It's like looking through a letterbox. Yeah. And more interesting than most TV yeah. shows. Picture quality. Picture quality is a bit sad right now. Never mind. More interesting than all the TV shows. Oh He's a terrible man. Right. Clean piece of cloth. <clears throat> I've always said that shape's really nice. You did. You did. On the speed up. You did, Mike, but he didn't change it anyway. Get the grit off. Some of you may have noticed I haven't left any room here for part enough. No, we thought you were going to part it a bit bigger so the fit would be a little bit bigger. Nope. Not the fit, but the, the end of it. You're not going to turn that just into the Just go anyway. cut this off on the bandsaw. Right. And so. then cut the tin off on the bandsaw and then just sand the bottom. Mm -hmm. It will be Chicken. fine. Chicken. That should give us that. Uh, last That's a good one, JP. A little bit of. Uh, what's JP saying now? Mike, have you considered getting lessons from Brian? Uh, in 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 uh, for what, Jamie? Turn it, I suppose. We're turning on the thing. <laughs> you like the shape? Singing? Wood turning? Well, no, he's... I've never heard Brian sing. Swimming, don't. horsemanship. Well, you want lessons in something? I can manage something. I'm sure I can. It's not your. It's not your most prominent skill, is it, Brian? What? Wood turning. Or no, singing. Singing. <laughs> no, that's 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 way down the list, Mike. About somewhere about ninety nine, I would think. Rob, Rob has just said uh, yes. I just checked. I don't know where I got a hundred pound from. I'm not very bright. Hello, well. <laughs> that's that's rubbish, Rob. What have I told you before, Rob, about using your words against yourself? Yeah. Never a good Do plan. It, Plenty of people out there will use their words against you. Don't use your own. Just give that a little second to flash off a little bit. Piece of safety cloth, no expense spared. Oh, 
<laughs> Chris Dobbs. <laughs> Use of masking tape, Mike, just saying. All ah, right, okay. Ah, right, Katie's okay. Katie's asking Jay. a question. Katie says, if you wanted to colour something, would you use Yorkshire grit first or not use it at all? You can, but you have to you know, uh, wipe it back off again using uh, methylated spirits just to take so any residue off. Once it's sand, the beeswax in it needs to come back off. Yeah, normally uh, if I'm colouring, I sand up to 400 and then use colour after that. Do you so seal it first, grit. Brian, Usually. when you colour it? Do you seal it before you colour it? Depends on the uh, colour. Sorry? Depends for, on the colour. Uh, it depends how you're colouring. If you're going to use, um, like, paint, um, you would seal it first. If you're using dyes, like intrinsic colours, uh, don't seal it. Because you, you actually want the stain to get into the wood. Paint just sits on the surface. Okay. Yeah. Douglas Mungham has just joined us. Hello, Douglas. Good afternoon, Douglas. It'd be shiny. Oh, Douglas. It'd be right and shiny, I think. <laughs> so no, this, this, nice. is, this is pretty well split at the end here. So this may well get a short and grim. Never mind. We'll see. Let's have a look and see if we get it off. Don't drop it. No, I think my name is Steve. He's saying Wayne, use, Wayne the woodturner, uses microphone, microphone after colouring. You can I use sometimes, uh, yep. You can, yeah. <coughs> Which is the uh, next grade up from the standard. Um, Microfine, it takes you up to 2,000 grit instead of 1,000 grit, basically. Yeah. Roy's a it's, it it does work. It says, it says, do we shed? Hello, do we? Let's have the uh, SC4 That's chuck off my office chuck, buddy. Oh, it's not an accident, the chuck, then. No, I don't have ice master chucks, Mike. <laughs> Did you know that, Pete? I'm not, I'm not spending I'm 300 quid in a chuck. I'm going to use one. one I got Chris for Christmas. Now yeah. I did that, Katie. I um I bought my wife uh, an airbrush, um with an easel and everything else, and she was going to take it up properly for painting pictures. I then borrowed it. It stays in the workshop <laughs> for about six months. And it's still Went back the to the house covered in dust. She said you can keep that. <laughs> yeah. It's now permanently installed in the workshop. Perfect. Great. A great plan. And you want Cunning new chisels to keep buying new chisels as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very devious, Pete. Works a treat, that one. That was the plan all along, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah, I bought her a motorbike, but she hasn't let me ride it yet. Cunning and devious. Indeed. <laughs> Get that squeezed Katie's, up good and tight. Katie's, Katie's uh, partner, Chris, says oh, he, he got me a pyrography kit. I'm not letting him use that. Yeah, don't blame you. It's a scroll chuck. You don't actually need to use the other side, but I kind of always do anyway. I don't know why I do that. That's because you're more asbestos. If you had asbestos, yeah. you wouldn't need to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. mm. Point, See, uh, yeah, I'm, that's not, close. That's close I'm not. I'm not being negative. I still think, for the depth of Halloween, oh, you know what I got to say, don't you? Well, it's not enough tenant. I don't. I well, well, looks a bit small. What size is it? Four inch or two inch? <clears throat> two inch. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure with your skills with the Halloween, there won't be a problem. We shall see. We shall see. If it flies off a lathe, it flies off the lathe. Roy, the boy's got a load of seasoned eucalyptus for free today. Oh. One of his landscapers. Oh. Nice. Excellent. Well um, seasoned eucalyptus. Even, even seasoned, I would be careful about sealing the ends of that because eucalyptus splits terribly. It's nice when it doesn't, but it does have a tendency to do that, doesn't it? Yeah. So we're going to use a fossil bit to start with to get uh, some of the bulk out of this. This may take a while. I'm turning the lace speed down just around 500. Mm. 
Mark's dropped out. Yeah, I just had to got, drop he's out. He's got to sort out that um, security, security nightmare to sort out. Okay, That's Mark. okay. Oops. Let me just stop that for a second and give that a bit of a tighten up. It's not quite tight enough. Chris, he's got a question. If the vast flies off the lathe, will Brian add those steps to his daily step count? <laughs> Possibly. He'll add another 14,000 if he adds the hoovering steps. Well, I'm having a couple of days off before I start my next... Uh, the next part of the challenge. So what have you done so far then? Well, so for the last 28 days, I walked... Uh, Four kilometers a day on my treadmill, which right. totaled up to about 101, 101 kilometers in 28 days. And what's the next so challenge? For the next part of the challenge, I'm going to up it to five kilometers a day for 28 days, oh. starting on the 1st of February. Now that's starting to feel like it's binding a little bit, so hold on to Chuck and withdraw it. Is that because the amount of shavings that's in? It's just because everything kind of gums up in the inside and it can't actually you might, clear it all the way out. You, you may be quite surprised. It's, it's getting a bit of steam off it as well. So yeah. it may be damp inside, a bit of so steam. it might you can turn see that. really so it nicely. Is, it is pretty damp, actually. It might turn so really nice inside. Move that out the way and just kind of brush that out. Give the, give the toothbrush back to Michelle when you're finished with it. And it is moving very slightly as well. Now. It is, is. There is a lot of wobble on it there. I see yeah. that. We'll switch it off. Put that back in it. Switch it back on. And now advance it up in. And continue hauling. <coughs> Roy the boy said you should make a steady, Brian. I think yeah, I should. Got a video on that. Yeah, you got a video on that, Mike. <laughs> I should, but I haven't. So I'll just have to trust that this will stay. I'll tell you what, well, I, made, I made, made, made my well, I made my steady years and years and years and years ago as a prototype, but I'm still using it and it still works fine when you need it. Did you make them out of um, what, skateboard Fire. wheels or whatever? Not the correct. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Skate wheels or something. Skateboards yeah. or inla inline skates, an old pair of inline skates inline from skates. a yeah. I mean, from a charity shop or something. There's a lot of things I would do differently to what I did, but I, I've never bothered because it does the job. So, yeah, you know. I made one for my old lathe. I haven't got round to making one for this lathe yet. Mm. Well, this one, <laughs> this one is. Uh, I I did this when I had my first lathe, and <laughs> the swing has increased on the lathes I've had because I'm now on my fourth lathe, and it's it's ch it, it, it's got a lot higher now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's got a great big foot on it now. Brent Beecross just joined us. Hello, Brent. Good morning. Hi, Brent. Sorry, a bit late there. Hi, Brent. Hello, Glenn yes. Cove's got a question. He said, will a steady rest work with that much wobble? Um, I think the idea is that you put the steady rest on first and you you don't have the wobble. Yeah, before it started to wobble because it was not, it wasn't wobbling. Stephen's in. I'm surprised it did start to wobble. I'm surprised it is wobbling, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, I, I think if you had a bigger tenant, it probably wouldn't. I'm not going to say that. Do you know what? I had to bite my lip, Pete. <laughs> Which is rare for me. It is very rare for you, I feel yeah. like. My lips don't so work. That's as far as I can go there. I don't want to take that to uh, chuck any further than that. Have you got an extension for the... No, I haven't. Bit. Not yet. Okay. I find if I use my small chuck, because I've got two of them here, and I use a 50 mil portion a bit, I can get, get the, the chuck inside piece. as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but uh, unfortunately, I haven't got a 50 mil. Well, you better get one. Yeah, I suppose I'd better. Now, it's not necessary, really. I mean, you could put use... this to one side so it's because it's kind of hot, so I'll put it to one side so I don't pick it up and burn my fingers. Don't so ask me could... how I know that. What you could do. If you haven't got an extension, I'm not not saying you should do it now because it's a bit difficult to do now. But if you if you did if you had an auger bit or a long drill bit, you would get the hole to the depth you want, 
and then force it out as far as you can go. And then you've still got a hole, a depth hole, to give you a guide and well, start the hollow. Well, I was intent. I I've just kind of done it backwards. Yeah. Are oh, you going to do it? That's fine. Enough. So I'm going to take this this drill bit here, which is a 12 mil drill bit. There's a question for you there, Mike, from JP. Oh. Um, Pop it in there. Oh, hey, let's oh, yeah, how Mike. deep I want this. Is there parts of all four of your lays? JP has said, Mike, is there parts of all four of your lays would you take and put together to make the ultimate lathe, or does the lathe you have now have everything you want? Um, the last one. <laughs> <laughs> You're happy with the lathe you've got? I'm extremely happy with the lathe I've got, yeah. And it's not happy with that? me. It's not happy with me, but I'm happy with it. Lewis has got a so point as well. He I says, want the hollowing down here to about eight inches. Yeah. Wow. Lewis has got a point. He says a little more ledge on the base to the face of the jaws might help for the alignment bit. Let's have a little uh, sharpie. Yeah, could have done, exactly. Yeah, but I think Brian's um, just trying to maximise what he gets out of that piece of wood. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, being a Scotsman. Yeah, it's just my miserable get. And we got the little point on your force a bit, on your uh, drill yeah. bit. Yeah, he's after all, from the north, north I'm of I'm the just, UK. I did measure from there, Terry. Okay. Just for the Turner with less experience... <laughs> <laughs> the, re the, re the reason Brian's doing this now is that you get rid of that very slow and very slow moving wood in the centre. So when you're hollowing, you still have a point to start your hollowing from, as opposed to having solid wood. Oh, do. It does help quite a That's bit. That's exactly why I'm doing it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm also going to be using the Simon Hope uh, six mil mini hollower and, and back hollowing when I get down that far. So you need a hole to start with. The mini hollower, you're no, no. using a, you uh, just said you're using the mini. Uh, no, it'll be the mini hollowing tool, a like six mil. I'm the using this. Tool, but it's a pro this, tool. This, yeah. this is, this is a. Hollow pro with the. Yeah, sorry. No, no, when you said that, I thought you were going to yeah. use a mini, mini hollower. I thought. Yeah, that, that. I might on get you, mate. about half an inch of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the, handle, that. <laughs> the handle will be four inches in the piece as well. <laughs> yeah. Right, let's have a saying, go what password is Mark changing? He's changing his Facebook password because Mark fell for the you're in this video thing and um, gave his password away. So is, this you in, is this you in this video? So we're going to turn the lathe a little bit. Uh, let me just put you on that camera for now. Which boss is asking what wall thickness are we aiming at? Two or three mil? Uh, <laughs> more, probably more like four or five. Can you explain so, what this is? I've kind of got this pre-marked on the on the on the tour tool post here. Might want to get this other camera in here. Well, you could have used what? the hose clip. Oh, yeah. I could have used the hose clip, but I, uh, built one. Or I could have bought a, a thing for it, but I just, I just I just drew a line on it because I'm a miserable boy. So that's it there. This is the. Uh, Robert Sorby, Hollow, Hollow, Hollow Pro, is that what it's called? Jig, Hollow Pro. Pro jig. Hollow and Jig or something? Yeah. Yeah, it's the Hollow Pro, which when you're using it with the Pro Hollow, it gets very really confusing. It does, mm. I. Mm. So. Good bit of kit, mine. Like the it. idea is it's got two rollers. There's a front roller and a back roller. The front roller is your tool rest. The back roller is a clamping roller. So if I put the Simon Hope tool in here now, it just rolls straight in. Now I have it kind of set so as the the tip of the cutter is right on centre, it's bang on centre there. And if I lift the tool up against the, the bike roller, it can't kick. Once I get away down in here, I'll have to extend the tool a little bit. Um, and we'll see how it goes. So let's just switch this on and have a go. Turn the speed up a bit. Because the forces on your arms would be yep. great if you were eight inches down inside. Yeah. yeah. So 
So I'll just do the stop winch and a half first. There is a slight learning curve to using this because what you're actually doing is pulling up on the handle. Yeah, rather than just... um, as opposed to holding it down. Yeah, of you course. Use the cantilever yeah. of the two rollers to uh, steady it into the piece. Yeah. It's an it's an alien way of doing it, isn't it? Really? It's but, yeah. It's a learning curve. Yeah. But if you see the um, silly way to make a box video I did, I went thirty yeah. and a half inches into that. You did well. Um, which that's pretty deep to do, to do pretty much by hand. Yeah. This, I'll tell, this tool grab me to do it. Yeah, I, I think even I mean I I'm a, I love the easy arm pro, but. The further side gone with that is about 13, 13 and a half. Yeah, I mean, it, this fills the gap in between. Yeah. Four it inches does. is easy. Six inches, you're starting to struggle. And it's um, eight inches and above, you really should be looking at uh, heavy duty kit. Mm. And this fills that gap in between the six and ten inches area. But um, it's not worth getting all the kit out for, but you kind of need it. Yeah. Remember, Brian, it hogs out really fast. I know. <laughs> but and this, is a, this is a brand new cutter, so. Maybe even quicker then. It never ceases to amaze me the amount of wood that the, the six mil cutters take. Absolutely. And, and they get a nice finishing cut with them as well. Mike, though, has got to go back to work. Cheers, Mike. See you, Mike. All the best, mate. Cheers. Now, JP's asking, is that a hollowing jig made just for Sorby tools? No. no. It's, um, that's the hope tool rest is he's it. using on it. This is a, this is a Simon Hope uh, Pro Hauler I'm using on this. My hollowing tools are the Simon Hope and the Hamlet Big Brother, which I use with the um, Sorby Hollow Pro. Um, yep. And they're both the same size bar, so it's... Um, doesn't need to be adjusted in between. But you can adjust it to any size. I'll show I'll show you how to adjust it uh, once I'm finished hollow here. Just want to clean out there so we can have a quick look in there and see where we are. I'll need a torch because it's okay. I wonder if what I was I was bumping into something there that was causing a bit of a it's, not. It's, it's this little nut. That was a tiny not. little nut there, look. And that's what's catching the tool. There's going to be a hole. Roy there, would like to know. Roy would like to know why you've painted black lines on your Sorby oh. tool. Uh, oh, the the it's black kind of lines on here. Yeah. Explain Let me why. Just how bring you this use back it. over and I'll explain what what that's for. Explain how you use that tool because it might be. So this this tool here. Can I bring that back a bit and let you see it a bit? So once I've got it in here, Roy. The black line on the top means the cutter is horizontal. So when it's cutting, it's taking as much of a cut as it can get. The dotted line on this side is at 45 degrees. So when I come to take a, a, a finer cut, you just rotate the tool over so you know where it is. And if you take it right over, you're back to 90 degrees now. Wow. So that's horizontal, the, the solid line. And the dotted line is the cutter set at 45 degrees. Look. Yeah. So it takes a more gentle cut when it's at 45 degrees, and it takes it a really strong cut when it's a vertical. When it's it does. Back. You won't believe it. You won't believe how much wood's out of that already. Yeah, it's just that when the tool's deep inside the vessel, then you Can't you need it. a guide that you can see. So I'm somewhere. I'm somewhere in between the two. Somewhere about 30 degrees there now. And I'm just going to start to bring that back nice and slowly and try and feel for any lumps and bumps there. Move them out. To try and get a, a, reasonably, 
a reasonably smooth finish. JP's got to go to a meeting. He'll say he'll contact you later, Brian. Hi, JP. Thanks, Matt. See you, JP. Rob CP saying he's not very good with that tool. He gets lots of ridges. The fault's with me, he thinks. Rob, it's not with yeah. you. The, he probably got the tool too horizontal, if that's the word. Take yeah. it back 45 degrees yep. or even 50. And just mm. do it slowly and it will take less of a cut, less aggressive cut, so you won't get ridges. Just try that. Rob, when I'm really sort of hogging out timber, I will be taking shavings. Oh. The thing well, is, on YouTube, you... I've got a coffee. Oh, well done. If you go to 50 degrees, it, it's much less aggressive, as you say, Terry, because it's, it's scraping then, as yeah. opposed to, to cutting. And yeah, then so if, you just... if, I, if I come right to the end here, you might be able, I don't know if you can you, you see that. Like, you, you, if, if it's on a 45 or even 50 degree, then you do take less. It, I know it scrapes, but if you're just trying to smooth out. Yeah, oh, I agree, totally. Through, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, does that light help again. any? So if I put that there now, that's the tool horizontal. Yeah, that would really rip it off. So that that'll Fair. take a take a fair big cut there. But if I turn it to forty five degrees there, so it's the the dotted line, and just touch it up against the edge there. You see, yeah. see that it takes a much nicer, smoother cut. And the work doesn't and, grab it. And if you go slow enough, you get your, uh, the, the rate of feed of the, the tool head or the tool cutter needs to be this uh, needs to be in line with the rotation of the, the piece. If the piece is not going fast enough and you go in there too quick, you'll get like a spiral or you'll get ridges. So you've got to just uh, vary the, the feed of the, the cutter head to the speed of the turning. You just check your tool rest, Brian, because Richard's noticed it as well. So it looks like it's jumping. Might be moving. So check you. It's a long way over the bed, mind you. So yeah, it is, yeah. Because I've got the, the, the uh, headstock set at 45 degrees. Oh, yeah. yeah. So currently, yeah, that's no. about 30 degrees, that cut I'm taking. But you can see, actually, you can see that that tool rest is working now as in... You're going eight inches mm -hmm. deep plus three inches for the rest to be away from us. 10, 12, 11 inches into the work and it's still cutting perfectly. Yeah. yeah. You wouldn't do that on uh, a normal tool uh, rest. Uh, 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 I'm having no, no trouble holding us, guys. I'm standing dead up, dead upright. My back is straight and I'm just, all I'm doing with the tool is lifting it upwards. The handle is being lifted upwards. That's all. Right. Brian, what? Watkins, what Watkins has got a question. Is he? Do you need to adjust the center line if cutting at forty-five degrees? Uh, so the thing is, the tool is so small. The tip is only six millimeter, and a trailing edge cuts less anyway. So probably not. No, because the because as Terry said, it's only a six mil cutter, and you're only going at forty-five. You're probably moving at about one mil actual site uh, cutting position. One to two mils at the most, I think. Yeah. If it was a bigger cutter, it would have a, a bigger effect. Yeah. Right. That's as far down as I can go with, uh, with the configuration I've got currently. So we'll just clean that out again. <coughs> Next thing I'm going to do is extend the toolbar. One of the good things about that six mil cutter is they're only £10 each. So if you decide to make your own tools, Douglas is going to make his own tool. You can buy that six mil cutter. They're about ten pound, and you can turn them three, four, five times. So I'm going to bring the tool rest right up to the edge of the piece now. Yeah. yeah. And see where that takes me with this. Have we said hello to the woodwork learner, Andy? So I've Andy. got another four inches no, there. So I need a little it. bit no, more length on this tool. Hi, Randy. So I've just where did he come from. There we go. Just extend just, the tool a little bit more. Just going to leave you for a second, guys. All right, mate. Good afternoon, Andy. I'm going to turn the speed up a little bit. Got it spotted, Joe. Why, thank you very much, Terry. <laughs> so I'm now I'm just uh, now I'm just finding a little hole in the middle and back hollowing. So I'm pivoting here. So how far down are you going? It's about eight inches, aren't you? 
seven. But you can hear the cutter cutting well, can you? Catch as well. Yeah, you get a yeah. catch. Yeah, that's because there's two flowers, man. Well, well, it was cutting. Now it is. You're getting a bit of vibration, don't they? Might want to check your um, chuck. Uh, what, what are you that saying? Mate? You might want to check your chuck tightness on the tenon. That word's a bit damp. Okay, do that in a second. So I'm just finding the center of the hole and slowly pulling the chuck, the tool from here, find the center, and then pull the tool outwards and backwards at the same time, just rounding the bottom off. That's what you could do with a camera right on the end. Mm. Inside on the tool. <coughs> See it. That yeah. would be good fun. That would be good fun. Ed Wilson's just come in from Western Coast, Arizona. Hello, Ed. Good afternoon, Ed. Welcome. Hi, Ed. That's me. That's me at the bottom of the hole. Mm. Oh, right. Gently then. No. No far down you are. So now I'm just trying to figure out how to get the make a nice round bottom on it. I suppose you have to do it by feel, don't you? You can't you, you see just, anything. It's, it's absolutely all by feel. Yeah. That but is um, all hard. Once you get here, beyond about four inches, you really can't then, see anything. Right. The end of the tool's up here now. Mm. So when the little movement there. Is is um, magnified up at this end. So basically, you just have to take your time. Check that. Sure. Yep, I'm coming out now. I'm just trying to find where they. Uh, where the tool is actually actually located when it's down there. Well, for the less experienced Turner, which I was going to say when Mike was here, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. let's move that out of the way and give that back. Well, when you're hollowing like this, you also need to clear those shavings quite frequently. Yeah, because they I will wind up on the tool if you don't. In fact, I wish I could show you how much was in there. I'm going to try and just. Bring him out with a stick. Oh, wow. Well, Doug Miller is asking oh, a question, actually. a technical question. He said, how, how often should you clean out the shop computer? Also, should it be in a box or cupboard? Yeah, right. Let me just show you something. Hello. And hello to Dave Mo Valley Man. <laughs> there is my computer there. Hi, Dave. That's my computer there. It's actually mounted in the next in the next room. And it just comes through the wall there. Ah. And the, the fan that's in that computer actually blows air this, this way. Right. So that's how, that's how you do I mean, it. You don't need to clean out your shop computer ever. And it shouldn't nope. be in a box. Because it's self-cleaning. When it gets enough dust in it, it just catches fire and cleans itself. That's the one. Yeah. Ah. I, I've got to tell you guys that I'm <laughs> almost, almost, almost delighted with that. <coughs> Let me get my torch in there. <laughs> we'll do my torch. There it is. Now you'll find out whether they did it or not. Yeah, i got a tiny little bit to go. Yep, one more. Let's more value makers casting more aspersions at me. Is he? he said, afternoon all, just popped in to see if you'd seen Pete's post on Woodturning International. He was using a pseudonym to show off his goblet with 22 captive rings. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> really? 
really? Go <laughs> <laughs> right, Mike. Find your way back, right then. Only just. I went in to put me, I dropped in a little message. My wife said, there's a sandwich for you in the fridge. Oh, she's yeah, nice. mate. Yeah. Oh, she's far too good to you. She is. My wife came down to the workshop and brought me a coffee. I mean, she did, yeah. Didn't tell it was in My the wife fridge. said, I'll see you later. Probably won't <laughs> go. Don't like to see your friends for coffee. I'll let you yeah, off, Molly Maker. That's um, where Michelle is today. She's waiting to see a friend as well. Let's see our biscuit for you then, Brian. Not today. You can see the angle the tool went there just as I run it down the edge. So I'm trailing the edge, really just at 45 degrees. So it's just, just cutting it no more. Running it down the edge. And then it'll actually start to turn. There. Just so you can just see it start to go across the way there. You can't and actually see very me. well. That, that, that's me coming down the bottom. You can't see very well. Okay. Quite no, well. because the um, Hold on. either the camera angles changed or yeah, your the... tool is rested too high. Yeah. Whichever. We could see the dotted line which going by. I've done. That's it. That's better. So I'll try that again for you. Thank you. And make sure the tool's in the middle before you switch the lid on. I tried not so to throw the... You know. 45 degrees on the tool. I just run it down the edge. Keeping the feed rate constant, but slow enough that you get two revolutions over the tip as you go down. You get a nice... Go and mute a minute, guys. Okay. Okay. Keeping the feed rate going is quite difficult. Yeah. But once I get down a bit further, just there it goes there, you see that? Just yeah. See how that yeah, kind of kicked yeah. across a wee bit? That's me, at, that's me right in the very bottom now. So I need to haul out a little bit more down there. So all I'm doing now is when the tool's right in the bottom there, where it is now, I'm just kind of pushing the handle away from me, pivoting on that and drawing it backwards to the end of that little arc. And you can sort of feel an extension of your hand. You feel right. the tip just starting to cut. Katie's having to dash. Bye, Katie. Okay, bye, Katie. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> Norman Greenwell says he got a message from his wife saying your dinner is in the dog. Yeah. <laughs> your dinner's still warm, Norman. It's in the dog. It's in the dock. <laughs> so you're going to find the middle. That's the middle. We're good there now. So there's no hole left in the bottom. It won't matter if we leave it a bit thicker in the bottom because it'll add extra weight because it's quite a tall vase. You need a bit extra weight in there. Just found some dry flowers in there or something. Sorry, this is taking a bit of time, guys. But that seems to be wobbling a bit more, Brian. I think it's drying out. Okay. Not a lumpy bit just there. That's feeling good all the way down to the bottom now. So I think we'll be right. Let's give it a clean out again. Have another look. See where we are. I'm back. Hi, Pete. Good to have you back. Hello. I'll just vacuum it this time. <laughs> There's about the same amount of wood just came out of there again. Torch. Right, who stole my torch this time? <laughs> well, you left it last time. Yeah, I know, but where was that, Terry? That's behind you, on the table. Ah, oh, Terry. Lost my torch. 
This is shocking. I've lost my torch. No, oh, there it is. Find it. Right, you need to clean your workshop a bit more often, mate. Yeah. Right, so we're okay. Mice now. We're okay yeah, at the bottom. There's some mouse trap, nice. mouse traps down here. There's a blinking mouse looking of... at us, look. Hidden <laughs> behind the end stuff. There's a little mouse down here, look. There he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm kind of finished with that now, so we're going to go back to uh, the overhead first for a second. I move this camera out the way. Finish with that tool. And I'll just bring my tailstock back around. So how much was that tool rest then, this, this Orby? This tool rest, it was, uh, yeah. I think I paid £18 or something for it, I think. Good. It's worth every penny. So just to show you what it is, now that I've got it off, uh, which is the best camera. Let's go with that. That's right. There we go. So they're set to. And it has these adjusting screws on the side. This is the pivot screw, which allows this, this arm here to pivot up and down. And this is the locking screw. So you adjust it to the thickness of your tool, the diameter so just, of your bar of your tool. Whatever whatever the tool diameter is, so should it be a flat bar or, or a round bar? That's the that's where you have to set the difference. Now, the, the issue being that you need to get whatever tool. So let's just use this as a demonstration tool. Whatever the tool is, it needs to be in the middle. It needs to be bang on center. So that's how you get the adjustment here on your tool post. So that's bang on center. And then you would drop this to touch the bar. You can't really see that, can you? I actually yeah, we went to the trouble of putting the spirit level on the back end of my handle. That's exactly what I did too. Making uh, sure I, that it was uh, bang on. When I was setting up square. for today, this is exactly what I did. I put the, the I put the spirit level on the tool once it's level and then drop that to match the tool. So your tool is level, it's on but bang on center for cutting, and then your grant. That's how it operates, guys. Excellent. Excellent. So that's that. Now I'm going to take that off, and we're going to do something that Mike's going to have a fit now. <laughs> You're Where's not going to ever cover it. I'm no, I'm not going to cover it. I'll right put this little tool rest on. There, and I'm going to use this tool. This is my Robert Sorby. If I can move now, I have too many tools in me. Slide that back a bit. Take that tool rest out of the way and let's go to there. That's a bit closer. This is a French curve one here, which is relatively new. I'm going to use that just to finish off the edge. Does that one have to be used at 45 or is that acting as a scraper? Well, you can you can use it as a scraper, you can set it at 45. The issue, the, the, the only trouble with this thing is this big noddle knob in the end. Because right. what I need to do is put it further in so they can get it, do the bottom first. Oh, then pull it back. If I can get the bottom. This is quite far in. So I'm just trying to set that there. That's it touching the bottom now. So I'm just going to use that to scrape the bottom, just to scrape off the bottom there, the little bits of ridges that I've got in there. There we go. That'll do the bottom. And now, start to bring it up the side. I'm using this because it's got a, it's got a bigger cutting profile, if you like, rather than that tiny little edge on the six mil. This has got a slightly bigger uh, cutting edge. And I can actually feel where it's contacting you, um, actually in contact with the wood better. Two questions for you, Brian. Yep. Douglas Mung said that bit of kit was six dots of your pocket money. 
It was what, sorry? Six lots of your pocket money. That's it, yep. And um, Woodbrook Learner said, which end of the tool did you say is the troublesome knob on? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Good one, Andy. Yeah, quick. Nice one, Andy. Roy's wondering, could you still not use the Steady Pro with that tool you've got there? You could, but it won't reach. Yeah, and I the issue with that is you. because you've got it's, it's the, the length of tool. Oh, yeah. And if I put it in there, you can only go that far. You can't get it all the way in. Ah. You could use it. If you were doing something shorter, you could use it. That tool, uh, that uh, the Hollow Pro is a great tool for people who are a little bit... Uh, Maybe have a lot, get a lot bit older, have a sore back, and can't bend over to look anything. Yeah. It takes it. all the pressure off your bike. You don't need to have any. Exactly. Yeah, you know, people as old as Mike, there, you know. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Mike. Anytime, Mike. We'll How about you eating your sandwich, aren't you, Mike? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Is, uh, you know, I just knew he was eating his sandwich. He's, he's gone quiet. His teeth clattering while he's eating it. Right, that's that's me kind of where I want to be there. It feels pretty smooth coming up there now. you got to move the tool rest back and do so another now top I have to bit. move the tool rest back. Yeah. So it's this dopey uh, knuddled knob can actually come out and the tool can actually finish coming out. I hope you can see that little line of shavings that's coming up with it. Yeah. Roy's saying he's got one of those for Christmas present. What do you mean, the the tool Brian's got now, or the rest? Possibly the bad back. Or the bad back, yeah. The bad back. Yeah, Ben isn't in because um, he's not warm up. He said he wasn't going to come in. Yeah. I made that bit up, by the way. <laughs> he would have said that, though, wouldn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he would. I'll do. Very good, Brian, that looks. Uh, I just give that a quick hoover in. Yeah. Oh. Oh. So that's how far we're hauling out to. Well, you can't see it. Put the overhead. Put the hoover in. <coughs> so we're we're hauled out right down to here. Yeah, it's a very elaborate depth gauge. Yeah. I wonder I if you have might a proper depth gauge. Of course, you know you could have mistaken that because that, that you do, uh, but the nozzle, Brian, the nozzle yes, is sir. blunt. There could be a hole right through the tenon as well. We don't yeah. know about. <laughs> so Here. that's uh. <laughs> Here's, here's hoping, Terry. <laughs> we, we've hauled out a full eight inches, guys. Totally eight inches into that without any stress, without any strain. And I'm delighted with that, to be honest. Now, will that fit in there? Not with the big one. It'd, it'd have to be sanding on a stick. No, it won't. No, it won't. That head is pretty big. It'll might catch and twist around. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. We'll find out. So I've changed the to the one inch head. But the angle you got the head on, but it's not going to, you're going to have to push the handle wrong That's way. That's all right. I only want this to do the first few inches. It's fine. You've only got to go as far as people can reach. And this isn't a sales pitch, but if anybody's got that system and they do a lot of hollow forms and vases, you can buy an extension bar, yeah. um, which is brilliant because you can put that on the you put that on the rest for stability, and you just feed it in, and you can sand. Oh, I should think down to twelve inches, something like that, ten inches, with the support of the tool rest. There you go. I haven't got one of those. 
No, it's just yeah. one of those things. I'm just, just mentioning the fact. I mean, I don't really care whether you get one or not, Brian. You know. No, but it's I'm a good gonna, idea. It's actually I'm a good idea. Gonna, I'm, I'm, not gonna lose, idea. I'm certainly not going to lose any sleep over it, Brian. I'm sorry. Oh, you're not. Oh, Mike. I no. can't. Oh, I'm devastated now. <laughs> good. <laughs> I had a delivery from Simon this morning, so I've got brand new sanding arbors. Sorry, say again, Pete. A delivery from Simon this morning, I got a brand new brand new set of sanding arbors. Oh, nice. Good man. I know what you're saying, Terry. If if we swivel that round a little bit more. Yeah, you may be, yeah, uh, that's It would get longer. I know exactly what you're saying. But because this gets wider as we go down, it's not such a big deal. I just thought the handle might touch the rim. Yeah, I was mm. careful just to make sure that was that's not going to happen. See, I can get it in, all the way in there now. <clears throat> I did practice this yesterday, guys, so I've already made one of these buzzers. You'll see it on Facebook. Oh, yeah. As Mike suggested earlier. Rob I always Cabral practice says... what I'm going to do lies. Life. Rob's, Always. Rob from Cabarrao suggests you prepare a business case for Michelle. A <laughs> business case? No, I'll just <laughs> check the money. You haven't got the extension bars yet. <laughs> I don't. I don't need to prepare a business case. I just spend the money. I have to be honest. The best. Oh, I, I still think the best thing is a piece of dough with a bit of um, Velcro <laughs> staple to the end, and then you just put put your sanding. Put a sanding pad on that, this, and then you sand in grit on that. That's what Mike's talking yeah. about here. Like, that's right. Yeah. yeah. But what I do, I put a instead of putting it straight on there, I put one of the little pads on. Yeah. First, so you well, got a bit a good of. That's a good idea. Uh, I could do that. Yeah. Pads, yeah. One I of got these. Got one on mine. Got one on mine permanently. One of these a little pad. Yeah, that's right. Or even the red ones, the soft ones, you know. Softer ones, yeah. Yeah. Great, great bit of kit that is. There we go. So there's two methods you can do. Oh, look at that. That's lovely. So there's no excuse. The there's no excuse for not getting it done, guys. There's, there's always there's always some kind of method. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, I don't use the softer ones because I've got so many tool marks. I need something a bit firmer to actually <laughs> stop them. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that, but I was trying to avoid that. <laughs> trying to be diplomatic when you're Brian. Yeah. So I did it with 80 grit first, and this is, uh, I forgot what this is now. I think it's 180. 40. Yeah, it's 20 grit. No, it's 120. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh look, mate. It's stole it. Oh, well. No big deal. That's better so than well, stealing your finger. I, absolutely, yeah. I'll just keep it moving, and we'll give that a little hoover out because it's a bit, it's getting a bit dusty in there now. Red button for stop. You left a bit on the bedways, Brian. I did, where? You left a bit here, yeah, just there. That's <laughs> it, good boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Happy now? Yeah, well, I was just thinking of you. <laughs> Give that a little bit of a clean out. Oh, you've got to get the hoover out again now. <laughs> I think it pretty good. There's a little ridge about, uh, about four inches in about here somewhere. That's about three inches. I would like to get rid of, but I'm not going to fuss too much over it now. That's just a demonstration for you to let you see how it, how it goes. And a very good one too. It's amazing how much the wood moves, doesn't it, when it dries out, when you're hollowing yep. and turning. And, yeah. See, there's a fairly, yeah. fairly yeah. pronounced little, I've lost my thing again. It's just going over slightly because of the <clears> yeah. drying process. And yeah, if you look at, look at the base, the base is virtually 100% true. So we'll just give that a little sand with the grain, if you like. And that should do us. You don't have to go mad on the inside, like... Getting up to 400 grit or something like that. It's... Right, they would do well outside of some sunshine. Hey, mm. where'd you find that then, Stephen? We got a bit here, Steve, as well. Steve, but uh, he just there long. Tiny Steve, bit. Steve is not that far from me. Where's the sunshine? Oh, there is. Perfect. I've got sunshine as well. Yes, look at my window. So have I. So have Perfect. Oh, it's not here. Up here. 
Perfect. And he's predicting yeah, snow but that's, that's, here. That's, that's because you live in Portsmouth. I mean, Plymouth. Predicting <laughs> snow down here. Is it? Well, it's quite. It's it's the best day we've had for at least at least a week here. It's um, eighteen degrees in the workshop at the moment. Eighteen. Yeah. Twenty-one right? in my uh, lounger. It's uh, sixteen point seven degrees in here. Yeah. Roxy P is talking about the uh, the live he did with a bad back, hmm. and most of us were there watching him. Well, none, of us, to... none of us logged out, so he could have an empty room and go off and rest right. his back in peace. We just kept on watching. Hmm. Cruel we were. I think that's good. I'm happy with that. Should be outside another little buff up. And Richard Phelan is saying it's sunny in Nimvadi as well, Brian. Lemavadi. 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 What was happened up there? But we seem to have lost all the polish from up here. We must have melted it. Let's put some more on. And we'll just polish up the outside. That's a term, you, uh, people, you don't hear very often from Brian. Let's use some more. Yeah. But let's <laughs> just use lots. Yeah, <laughs> Brian just tends to say less is less. Less is more. Less is more. <laughs> less less oh, is more. The, the less is less in your pocket. Yeah, the least amount is best. Not happy with the way that super glue reacted to the wood. <clears throat> I tell you, maybe some of you guys in earworms or even in the chat would uh, put me right on this. On several occasions when I've done anything on on uh, on a video, whether it be live or an edited video, and you put CA glue on, you always get a bit of a mark. Normally, you get some sort of mark. And somebody said, "Well, if you put um, either put oil, sand and sealer on it first, sand and sealer, it doesn't stain the wood so much." Um, and I don't. I, can I, do, I, I didn't find it. I didn't find it worked. But it doesn't it soak can in reduce so the stain on the top, because um, it doesn't soak in around the split. It goes down through the split. But mm. <clears throat> as I said okay. earlier, my, my method is to CA it before you finish cutting it, <clears throat> and then you cut the surface of the CA off. Mm. But it's always going to be there. You mean I need to cut that again? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, so, just no. cut, cut another two mil off of that, and it will hide it. No, don't. <coughs> Excuse me. I was thinking um, tennis ball in there. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to, then you'd lose your shape that you got there. You have to take it all yeah, the way I, down to me. I, yeah. think, I think it's best left as it is. I think personally. it's best left like that. It looks good. Yeah. You've got to I spray like it black good. anyway, isn't you? You're going to spray it black. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I could actually put juice on your paints on it. That would look nice, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mm. That would hide it. Robert yeah. Dolman's having to go. I'll send and see the inside. See you, Robert. Take care, mate. Bye, Robert. Bye, Robert. See you later, mate. What time is it? Anyway? 25 to 3. Jeez. It's ridiculous. If you rewind it um, an hour and a half and put the log in the other way around, mm. then those bits will be cut off and you won't have them anymore. What? That's right. What are you raving about now, Pete? Raven's Actually, with, with the, way you, the curve would have took the splits out. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not suggesting you should do it, but you that the way you've got the shape of that vase, if you wanted to take those, you know, cut it, cut those splits off, you'd uh -huh. still have a very nice vase. Yeah. Would be quite as nice as now, but the, the way you've got the angle. Off, I mean, yeah, just parted it off. Just, just a bit below wider the, mouth, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But it would still look good. It's it's still got a nice shape. I think I've said that more than, more than I'm going to say any, ever again. I have to bring it down to there. Yeah, if you took it down to there, it would still have a nice shape, is what I'm trying to say, Brian. Yeah. I'm not saying you should have to do it. I'm just saying as a, as an option. God, he's yeah, sensitive, isn't he? Yeah, but yeah. I, 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 see, the thing is, that the next thing you do is take it out of the lift. So if I'm going Robert to do Robert Hodgepodge says it's time to reverse it and turn the tenon off. It, it disappoints hmm. you, Robert, but he's going to cut it off on the bandsaw and sand it. Yep. Carefully. So you're not going to fly, fly today. No, I've got a, I've got a wedge uh, sled for ah. cutting off round things. So, Good. And I use a rubber mat to wedge it in to hold it with. And I have the proper Andy sled. Woodwork. And so. Andy Woodwork Learner says, when you get to a certain age, you can't stop 
you can't stop the crack showing. Is that right, Mike? Oh, that's true. <coughs> but, yeah, uh, that, that you, you're totally right there. That's why I've started <laughs> playing around with resin because I'm sure I'll be able to fill in the <laughs> fill in the grooves of my forehead with some resin. Get a couple of gallons. Right. Yeah, <laughs> a couple of gallons. <laughs> So the, the the longest crack is there. So I'd need yes. to take that bike to there. Yeah, yeah but you're not going to, are you? No, no, no need to. What I was simply saying was that if you did, the shape is that good and, and that flowing that if you took that off, it right. would still look good, is what I'm saying. Let's, let's take it off right. and finish it. No, it looks nice. No, like it no, is. no, no. I, yeah, take I, it off it a lathe and cut the tenon off. Don't bother taking it. Yeah. Oh, that's a really nice shape. That's look, that looks great. It does look. Good. Let me just nip the bottom of this can enough. See, so there's another way of handling those cracks, which I've used in the past. Go just on. Because it's so thin on the end that you cut through. Yep. And just have a, a, a frayed end on it. Oh yeah, or frayed, yeah, different. Yeah, well, a bit like the well, actually, very similar to the one that Brian put up on Facebook yesterday. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's got it's yeah. got a bunt end. <laughs> yeah. I bunt it. Right, you want to see how I'm doing this on the one, so? Not yes, really. No, no, we don't. Oh, if you've got a sled and, and, you know, if you're not doing it the way I would do I'd, it, then I'd rather yes. look at the record uh, power chuck. Not, not, not doing it the way you would do it. Do it. I, I put the test card up first. <laughs> yeah. Test card. Look at that posh sled he's made. Look. That's a nice so there's my little sled. Yeah, nice And I sled. use a wedge. So I just get it lined up with the bottom. There we go. Right there from where I need a wedge under that end. There we go. Right. Switch that on. It's amazing. You've got the you got the is that the BS oh it's a bigger one. How clean it looks. BS three fifty. Yeah. Mine's a 400, yes, but it doesn't look as clean as yours. Mike, yeah, after he's done that cut, he would be Brian. hoovering that out inside and out afterwards. So <laughs> I'm just going to sand well. the bottom of this quickly on my uh, power sander. I can show you that too, if you want. Yeah, got to see it all. Excuse the moving camera. Lewis reckons that that vase needed a, needed a foot. Ah. <laughs> 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 Uh, it's okay. So we'll just put that on there. Saved another half hour. You turn it off, didn't it? Mm. Benches on the slope. Yeah. yeah. Benches on the slope. <laughs> it's the benches fault, yeah. Well, I will fix it now. There, if you haven't got a belt sander handy, you can always make a disc and stick it on the lathe. Yeah. I use a disc on yeah. the lathe. That's what I do. Well, I use a sanding arbor on the lathe, actually. So just... yeah. That way you can get a bit of a concave bit as well. That should be better now, I think. Michael Buckingham is suggesting you could use just colour the rim on the inside down to the end of the cracks. I suppose you could do, but if the cracks are not fully filled, the colour would we'll come see. through to the front. Yeah. Michelle, who's busy in the chat? Michelle, Hi, Michelle. Oh, Michelle. a biscuit, please. Man's Good waiting. Hello, Michelle. Hi, off. Michelle. Wait on there. I'm not happy with the cracks at all. Oh, well. So Can't put it back on now. You just took a tenon off. I know. Sure. Well, you could bounce all the cracks off. I could. So there you go. Bounce it. There's a lot of us we made today. Very nice. It looks nice. Very, Very nice. Shape's lovely. Fantastic. Nice Very shape and all. Really nice. Yeah. yeah. It hold, nice it, hold it out. Uh, what I might do, sometimes I uh, spray the inside with a um, with a dark colour or something. Yeah. There you As go. You, advertising spray works well on the inside. So there you go. Well, turn it around like that. You can't see the cracks. It's fine. There no, you go. It looks lovely. <laughs> No, it's really sure. nice, honestly. That's it, guys. I said that. You have, mate, guy. Just yeah. once or twice today. Say it again. 
Even the mouse, even the mouse on the right hand side saying that looks nice. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Better be <a> mouse up there. <laughs> yeah, my half cut mouse is staying in. Oh look, oh look, 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 look. Oh, geez, oh, break the leaf. oh, the blinking family's coming out now, that. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, look at them. <laughs> oh, look at them. Look. You want to get some poison down, mate. <laughs> and in the name of goodness, there's another one. They're tame, aren't they? Really are good. <laughs> So there we go, nice. guys. Let me uh, let me get, let me bring you guys back into the picture. <laughs> Those of you that are left. Yeah, they're dropping like yeah. flies. Joe's still there. there. Oh, she's still there. Joe's cool. still, hey, yeah. still here. Yeah. Yeah. There we go, guys. That was a that was an experiment in deep hollowing, just to give you an idea how to use the said Robert Sorby tool rest. And a good you demonstration stick. it was too. So it there was. you go. There's Excellent. there's the the Robert Sorby Hollow Pro. It's called. Uh, I held my interest for two hours and for an hour and a half. And there's the, uh, there's the, 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 the hollowing Quite tool that we used mostly. We used this big hole, Simon Hope hollowing tool. It's all, all it. known as the it's, it's, Simon it's, Sorby system or uh, the. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. So it's a beautiful thing, that. Robert Hope. Or the Robert so, Hope system. There we go. So that was the tools of the trade today. I enjoyed doing that. Um, the hollowing, I think, is a full eight inches. It is indeed. Well, glad to hear somebody enjoyed themselves. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Friends like you who need enemies. Thanks for sticking with me, guys. That was a long, uh, long old turn today. But I enjoyed doing it. Hope you guys yeah, enjoyed and maybe even learned a little bit. I don't know. Um, don't take what I do as gospel. Cause... I've learned something. Uh, yeah, I've don't, don't down more than four inches. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> Make small buzzes. <laughs> Make... <laughs> small buzzes is always better. Yeah. yeah. Three inches is a really good depth, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Just make boxes. That's the way yeah. to go. Boxes and goblets. That's the way to go. Forget the other forms. <laughs> boxes and goblets. <laughs> so, thanks very much for coming in, guys. Um, it's quarter to three. We'll call it a day. We shall uh, talk to you all again. Who's on next? What day is this? This is Thursday. Thursday. We've got, we've got our good Party friend tomorrow, Steve. Mar uh, Steve on tonight. Uh, tomorrow yeah, night. Wayne Wayne's Wednesday, on lunchtime. Uh, Steve's on in the evening. And then yeah. we have Steve again on Sunday. I think Wayne again on Saturday. Saturday. JP's yeah. on Saturday as well with his cartoons thing. JP's Saturday afternoon cartoons. Don't know how many others I'll are see on, you all guys, Monday, because... Monday lunchtime, don't forget the giveaway. Oh yeah, Draw. Terry's. Don't forget yeah. Terry's giveaway for his. Uh, if you haven't I've seen, seen the video I, yet, I've, I've, go I've to seen last the lid, guys. I've seen the lid. Go to last and Mondays and yeah. read the read the description. Yep. Answer. So you need put a comment in using the word. Get a chance Hashtag to do turn. Hashtag Hobbit. And you'll all be pleased Already. to hear I can't make it Monday for Terry's because I'm having a medical. <laughs> because you're going to have to go that. back to work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, try today. They'll probably say he's uh, not. When, when's, you, when's your next live video, Pete? Um, September. 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 Yeah. Oh, okay. 20, 23, isn't it? <laughs> not, yeah. not I'm, not, then. I'm not sure what year, but. Apparently, <laughs> 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 the Fair internet has been delivered sometimes. Okay, guys, let's call it a day. So it's goodbye from Pete. Cheers, everyone. Goodbye from Mike. All the best. Good afternoon, everyone. Goodbye from Angelic, uh, Joe. Bye, everyone. And uh, goodbye from... Before you go. Oh, wait a minute. Goodbye, Before everyone. We go. Pete's not away yet. Thanks for being here. Before you Bye. go, if this works... Putting a link in somewhere. Work. Hang on. You sticking a link in? Yeah. There's a link to Ooh. Terry's. Terry's live on the Terry's that's, going to that 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 and stick the Hobbit hashtag Hobbit in there. And you'll be in the draw next the week. link's not quite ready yet. You there guys is. were. Yeah, you, the link. you guys did one, a lot of chat. A lot in. of chat today. Something, well, we something, all. hashtag Hobbit, and you'll be in the draw. That's hashtag crazy Hobbit. stuff. See and don't forget, my, don't forget my website, guys. Pop over and have a look at my website. See if there you want to buy. No, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. There we go, people trust the trees. There you go. That's it, guys. We're gone. We're gonna. We're gonna press the button. Bye, everybody. Nice to Bye. see you. All.
Bye for now. Bye. Yes.